Welcome to this video where we will talk about the order of accuracy of our finite difference formula so that by the end of this video you will be able to calculate the so-called observed order of accuracy of a finite difference formula. So up till now we have not really talked in detail about the error that we make when we use finite difference approximations to the derivative. Um, what we know though is that if we want to reduce the truncation error we need to either make the spacing between adjacent points h smaller or we would use a higher order formula. So let's do an example here. Let's look at f of x equal to e to the power x and let's evaluate the derivative at x equal to 1 using second order central differences. Okay, so second order central differences would be f at xi plus 1 minus f of xi minus 1 over 2h minus the truncation error which is 1 third h squared times f triple prime at some unknown location xi. Now I want to evaluate this according to the example at x equal to 1. So xi is equal to 1 and that means that my neighboring point xi plus 1, the next point over, is a distance of h away, so it is 1 plus h, and the point xi minus 1 is a distance h away into the negative direction, so it would be 1 minus h. So that means that f prime at 1 is equal to, well, f at 1 plus h, but f is equal to e to the power x. So that is e to the power 1 plus h for this particular function. As an example, minus f at xi minus 1, but xi minus 1 is 1 minus h, and the function is e to the power x. So minus e to the power 1 minus h. The entire thing then divided by 2 times the step size h. And then we have our leading, well, the truncation error that is negative one-third h squared times f triple prime at some unknown location psi. So let me calculate now the absolute value of the error. The absolute value of the error is the true solution for the first derivative, which I can do the analytical derivative of e to the power x, that's e to the power x, at x equal to 1, the analytically exact derivative is e to the power 1. It's my true solution minus my numerical solution, and this is my numerical solution using second order central differences. So let me just subtract this. So this is the error that I am making if I have a step size of h. Now I know that I can express this error as the truncation error using Taylor's theorem. So it must have this form, absolute value of h squared over 3 times f triple prime of xi. Right? That's just the functional form of this arrow. So if I use different spacings of h, code this up with second or central differences, calculate in this manner the arrow, and plot that arrow versus the spacing h, I will find that in a logarithmic logarithmic plot, log log plot, that all of these calculated values line up pretty much on a straight line. And we saw before that the slope in the log-log plot here for a second order method is given by the order of the method. So in this case here, the slope of this line in a log-log plot would be 2. Okay. But now if I keep on decreasing my spacing between adjacent points, something interesting happens. Instead that the arrow goes further down, becomes smaller and smaller, what we'll see is that the arrow will actually start to increase. Which is very weird, right? Because making the spacing between points smaller should improve my results and not make them worse. But from some point on of h, making h smaller seems to make my arrow larger. So why is this arrow increasing with smaller h? Well, that's because the error is not only the truncation error, right? But, well, it's the truncation error plus something else. And what's that something else? Well, the question is, can we evaluate e to the power 1 plus h exactly? Well, no, right? Because we have round-off error. 
So the error is truncation error plus round off error, which means that if I'm evaluating in my code e to the power 1 plus h, I will have e to the power 1 plus h, the true value, plus a round off error. Let's call the round off error r1. And similarly, if I evaluate at xi minus 1, so e to the power 1 minus h, I will have the true value, but plus a round off error. Let's call that round off error r2. So that means in my formula here to calculate the derivative at x equal to 1, I have the true values, e to the power 1 plus h, the true value, but then plus a round off error r1. And similarly, I have something right for the neighboring point to the left. So I have the true value that I'm subtracting, e to the power 1 minus h, but then I also have a round off error associated with this, that is minus r2 and then everything divided by 2h. And then I have my truncation error on top of it, of course, that's proportional to h squared. So this truncation error here, right, that's proportional to h squared, <coughs> that's gets, that gets smaller with smaller h, and that's what's happening here on the right part of this graph. That's the er area where the truncation error is dominant, is larger. But then I have these round off error terms, which is the difference of two round off errors, but that gets divided by h, right? So if I make h smaller and the round off errors stay comparable, then I'm dividing by ever smaller values of h, and therefore this part of the error gets larger with smaller h. That causes this increase. So this left part of the graph where the error increases again is the area where the round off error dominates, meaning the truncation error is much smaller than the round off error and I'm only seeing round off error whereas on the right part where the truncation error dominates, my round off error was much smaller and I only saw truncation error. Now, how does that help us? Well, we can use this knowledge about the order to test our code implementation of finite difference methods. If I want to calculate the true solution of the nth derivative, right, I know that I have some finite difference formula plus my truncation error that is alpha times h to the power p. Which means that if I want to know what my error is, right, my error is the true solution minus my finite difference formula. And I know that this scales, as the truncation error does, as alpha times h to the power p for a pth order method. So here's the procedure to test your code implementation of a finite difference formula. For different values of the spacing between adjacent points h, calculate the error as a function of h using a calculated analytical true solution and the result of your finite difference formula. Now, ideally, when I say use different h, those spacings should be reduced by a factor of two several times. But h must remain large enough so that we're still in this regime where the truncation error dominates and we're not yet in those small enough h's where the round off error dominates. Okay, so the result will look something like this, right? We'll have a data set, a data set of h and the associated errors, those data pairs, which are plotted here as symbols in this log log plot. Now, we have data points. We know that the error follows a certain formula, alpha times h to the power p, which was fortunately one of these nonlinear forms that we could fit using linear regression. So we have data sets that we can now do linear, linear regression on to find the exponent p, the order of the method. Right, so we basically have that in a log-log plot, that would be a line. So the p that we calculate, the order that we calculate from the data that we generated by our code using finite difference formulas is called the observed order because we are observing what the finite difference formula does, what the actual error is in our implementation. 
And now the observed order that we get from this curve fitting should be close to the formal order that we can derive from our Taylor series derivation of the finite difference formula. And if that is not the case, then we know that we have a bug in the implementation in our coding of our finite difference formulas. Thank you for watching.